Hi everyone, so today I have a really nice question for you and we are going to be looking at the GCD of polynomials, the Euclidean division algorithm and modular arithmetic. So in number theory, these are concepts that can be used a lot and certain questions like this one which you will see, a lot of these concepts are intertwined into one another. So the knowledge of maybe the GCD of polynomials or maybe how you can calculate them does help in solving some number theory problems, especially in Diophantine equations. So yeah, let's see how that goes. So this is the problem number four from the Korea Junior Math Olympiad in the year 2012. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the GCD of polynomials and the Euclidean division algorithm. After that, you have exponential Diophantines and modular arithmetic. Then we have some book sessions for national Olympiads and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so the goal is to find L, M, N belong to natural so that it satisfies this given equation, right? So 5 raised to the power L times 43 raised to the power M plus 1 is N cubed. Now one thing that I might observe over here is that 5 and 43 are both of them are primes. And whenever you have like primes on one side of the equation and some factorizable form or some factored form on the right hand side, things become easier to deal with. So I can just send this 1 to the right hand side and maybe factorize that. So 5 raised to the power L, 43 raised to the power M is N cubed minus 1. And this can be very easily factorized like this. Okay, great. So now, well, we need to determine some things. Now, I can split it up into cases, but I don't know if these two things have a common GCD. So for example, if their GCD is, let's say, 5, right? It is possible that n minus 1 will be some 5 raised power a, and n squared plus n plus 1 will be 5 raised power b with certain quantities of 43 as well. So it's possible that this 5 raised power L might get split up between these two. However, if their GCD is not 5, or if let's say 5 is not a common factor for these two terms on the right hand side, then we can conveniently say that one of them will entirely contain 5 raised per L. Right, so that is why we need to somehow like observe the GCD of n minus 1 and n squared plus n plus 1. And how do we really do that? Well, we just run the Euclidean division algorithm. So you do nothing really, you just divide n squared plus n plus 1 divided by n minus 1. And you see what you get. Well, um, you can very well see that n squared plus n plus 1 can be written as n minus 1 times n plus 2 plus 3. So the remainder is 3, the quotient is n plus 2. Uh, that's what we'll obtain when you do the long division. Okay, great. So this essentially becomes the GCD of n minus 1 comma n minus 1 times n plus 2 plus 3 which is nothing but the GCD of n minus 1 and 3. Now n minus 1 can either be a multiple of 3 or it cannot be a multiple of 3, right? So for example, if n minus 1 is a multiple of 3, so let's say it's 3k, so what will the GCD? What's the GCD of 3k and 3? It's obviously 3. But if n minus 1 is not a multiple of 3k, Right? If n minus 1 is not a multiple of 3k, then that essentially means that the GCD of n minus 1 and 3 is obviously 1. So, it's safe to say that the GCD of n minus 1 and 3 can either be 1 or 3. And that's great because it's neither 5 nor 43. So, essentially, the GCD of n minus 1 and n squared plus n plus 1 is 1 or 3. So, it, it's impossible that they can have a factor of 5 common to both of them. Right? Just writing the expression that we had above, 5 raised to the power L times 43 raised to the power M is equal to n minus 1 times n squared plus n plus 1. And from this GCD expression over here, equation number 1, I can very well see that I can just split this question up into four cases. Right? So case number 1. Case number 1 will be that n minus 1 will be 1 and n squared plus n plus 1 will take all of the other terms. 5 is power L times 43 is power M. Case number 2 would be where n squared plus n plus 1 is 1 and n minus 1 takes all of the other stuff. Right? 5 is power L and 43 is power M. 
Case number three, and this is probably where the GCD helps us, it's good to see that the GCD can only be one or three. So no matter if it's one or three, it is not five or 13. So these two terms do not have any common factor of five or 43 in them. So for example, if let's say n minus one, if that is zero mod five, then this essentially means that n squared plus n plus one cannot be divisible by five. It just cannot be divisible by five. Otherwise the GCD would have been five, right? But it's not, it's only one or three. Same case with 43. And this works because five and 43 are primes and three is also prime. So that essentially means that I can have n minus one is equal to five is power L and n squared plus n plus one is equal to 43 raised power m. And similarly, case four, I will have n minus one as 43 raised power m and n squared plus n plus one is equal to five raised power L. The thing to note over here is that I did not take any case where n minus one is let's say five raised power A and n squared plus n plus one is five raised power B times 43 raised power M. Because in that case, in that scenario, let me maybe just write a side note over here. So if you are thinking that n minus one can be, let's say five is for a and n squared plus n plus one can be five is for b times 43 is for m, that obviously cannot happen because otherwise then the GCD of n minus one and n squared plus n plus one would be five. At which we clearly see is not happening. It can only be one or three. So it cannot be like this five is for l can get split up between these two terms on the RHS. It's not gonna happen. If it's gonna go somewhere, it's gonna go in its entirety. And that is why we have these distinct four cases. So maybe let's just analyze these cases one by one. So case one, case one, we have n minus one is equal to one and n squared plus n plus one is equal to five is power L times 43 is power M. So n essentially becomes two, right? And five is power L times 43 is power M is nothing but seven. And this is clear to see that it has obviously no solution over here. Okay, so moving on to case number two. Case number two, we have n squared plus n plus one is one. And the other thing was that n minus one is five to the L times four to the power M. And again, it's quite clear to see that n squared plus n would become zero. So n, n plus one becomes zero. So therefore n is equal to zero or minus one. But since n is a natural number, so no solutions over here. As n is a natural number. So moving on to case number three. So we have no solution in the first two cases. Right, first case no solution, second case no solution. Move on to case number three. Here we have n squared plus n plus one is, I believe, five is power l, and the other thing n minus one is forty three is power m. Okay, great. So we will just analyze this. N squared plus n plus one becomes zero mod five because l is a natural number. It has to be greater than one. It's obviously zero mod five. And maybe because we have a quadratic on the left hand side, maybe it's a good idea to complete the squares. So you can just multiply by four. And then maybe try and factorize this out or maybe try and complete the square, right? Or two n plus one whole square plus three is congruent to zero mod five. But that essentially becomes two n plus one whole square is congruent to minus three mod five. Or I can write two n plus one whole square is two mod five but it's a very elementary result that for all a a square is actually congruent to one comma four comma zero mod five right so a square mod five can only be one comma four comma zero a square can never be two mod five and this is really check batching the residues of a square mod five and since a square is never mod five it has no solution over here as well right but this case is also giving us no solutions but that essentially means that if a solution exists it will be from case number four if a solution exists it will be here and the case number four was n minus one is five is for l and n squared plus n plus one is 43 is for m now there is i can pretty much see an obvious solution over here right what's the obvious solution obvious solution is where l is equal to one so n becomes six and correspondingly, I get m is equal to one. So L1, M1, N6 is pretty much an obvious solution that I can see. But when I see that, I eventually think that what if L is greater than or equal to two, right? What happens over here? If L is greater than or equal to two, then what, what's the scenario? Well, N minus one is five power L. And if L is greater than or equal to two, 
n minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 25 because 5 squared is 25. So essentially n becomes 1 mod 25. Right? And so n squared plus n plus 1 is congruent to 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 mod 25. Which essentially means that n squared plus n plus 1 is congruent to 3 mod 25. And this was 43 to the power m which is congruent to 3 mod 25. And at this point, it's good to see the residues that 43 to the power m makes with mod 25. So it's, I think, good thing to know that 43 to the power m, or let me just put it this way, 43 to the power m is obviously congruent to 43 mod 25. 43 squared is actually minus 1 mod 25. 43 cubed is actually minus 43 mod 25. And 43 raised to the power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 25. You can just square this over here. And 43 raised to the power 5 then becomes 43 mod 25. I think it's good to see that 43 raised to the power m mod 25 can only be 1 minus 1, 43 or negative 43. So that means 43 raised to the power m mod 25 is never 3 mod 5, 3 mod 25 right is never 3 mod 25 so that means that we have no solution for l greater than or equal to 2 because this entire analysis was done for l greater than or equal to 2 so it has no solution for l greater than or equal to 2 that means only solution is at l equals to 1 which we have already considered so kind of just to recap n minus 1 becomes fetched for l which implies n is equal to 6 and n squared plus n plus 1 is 43 to the m so you get 43 is equal to 43 raised to the power m, so therefore m is 1. So therefore 1 comma 1 comma 6 is the only solution. Right, so that was a pretty interesting question. And over here, essentially, we needed to find out the GCD to kind of shorten down the cases. And then individually, each case was pretty easy to deal with. Okay, so moving on to certain book suggestions for National Math Olympiads. We have elementary number theory by David Burton, principles and techniques in combinatorics, problem solving strategies by Arthur and Gell, functional equations by Venkatachala, problems in plane geometry by Sharikin, and of course, elementary number theory by Siapinski. Okay, so at the end we have a similar but challenging problem. And I wanted to find all triples x, y, z of positive integers, so again, natural numbers, such that it satisfies this given equation. x cubed is equal to 3 raised to the power y, 7 is for z plus 8. Again, the idea is that 3 and 7 are primes, so x cubed minus 8 becomes this expression over here. Maybe just factorize, try to use the GCD if you want, and then maybe let's see if you can come up with a solution. So yeah, try it out and let me know in the comment section if you're able to solve it. And until then, I'll see you the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Sinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.